Hello darling and welcome to your Stardew Valley guide for spring in year one. This video will be structured as a commentary on my first season in Stardew Valley with the tips and tricks I use to maximize my profits, levels and experience. I will be commenting on my processes on a day by day basis in case you want to try and follow along. So with that said, let's get on with the video. On my very first day, I like to clear some space on my farm for my parsnip seeds. Once I have these planted along with any wild seeds that I find, I like to make a chest as the inventory space in the early game is harrowing and then I start to explore the map to find any forageables. For those of you who aren't aware, this section of the map during spring often contains spring onions every day in which you can eat to regain a small amount of energy. After I am done exploring, I head into the town to find Caroline and gift her a daffodil while making my way to Pierre to spend all my money on parsnip seeds. I like to purchase the parsnip seeds and plant as many as I can throughout the season to maximize the experience I gain from farming. I also do this to unlock the recipe for quality sprinklers as soon as possible which is obtained from reaching farming level 6. On day 2, I start the day by watering my crops, visiting and gifting Caroline at 9am, going for a little forage and then heading down to the docks. Once Willy gives me the training rod, I spend the rest of the day fishing. One little tip you can use while fishing is to sell anything you've caught directly to Willy before 5pm when he closes. I like to do this because it reduces the risk of my inventory becoming full and it also ensures I can make as much money as possible. On day 3, it will always rain, so this is a perfect day to go fishing. After a quick forage around the map, I decided to head to the river and the ocean to catch as many community center fishes as possible. I also made a little chest at the front of my farm to place any community center items in so I didn't accidentally sell important things. I always struggle with completing the fishing bundle in this game, but there is a little cheat sheet I use which I will link in the description that specifically states which fish spawn during certain seasons, times, and weathers. I would also recommend players to visit the ocean to fish during day 3 to catch an eel. Standard eels sell for around 80 gold where whereas silver eels sell for around 100 gold. They can only be caught after 4pm during spring and fall. It's the perfect way to make a good bit of money at the start of the game and also to try and increase your fishing levels too. On day 4, I decided to go fishing again to catch another fish for the community center and then I headed to Robin's to purchase a pathing recipe. One thing I've noticed about myself is that I really like to organize my farm as soon as possible to keep things tidy and in order. After laying out some pathing and planting some seeds which will be used for tappers in the future, I quickly headed to the saloon to buy a salad in preparation for the mines. On day 5, I unlocked the scarecrow recipe and adopted a doggo named Yoshi. After I harvested all of my schnips, I went into town and received the community center cutscene which will only happen if you enter the town from the direction that I did on a sunny day. I read the placard inside the community center so the wizard would send me a sexy email and I bought some more parsnip, potato, green bean and cauliflower seeds from P-Dog. I planted all my new seeds and then headed into the mines. During my first trip in the mines, I tried to focus on collecting as much copper as possible. I luckily made it down to floor 5 before I became exhausted and once my stamina was low, I left. I was hoping to collect at least 20 copper so I could make a furnace but I was woefully unsuccessful. On day 6, I visited the wizard to officially unlock the community center and I spoke to him too. Make sure you do this as oftentimes the person you're missing for the introduction quest is the wizard and Pierre. I then headed to the ocean to spend the entire day fishing. I realized I had enough money, so I bought the fiberglass rod and threw my old one in the ocean. On day 7, I completed the spring foraging bundle and headed back to my farm to plant the 30 seeds. Once the seeds have grown, you should make more seeds and repeat this process up until the 21st of spring as they take 7 days to grow. I will explain what this is useful later, but for now, please just trust the process. If you already know this strategy, I guess you must be a stardew sweat just like me. Again, I visited Caroline, gave her a daffodil, and decided to fish for the rest of the day. On day 8, I visited Caroline and then went mining for the rest of the day. I managed to make it down to floor 14 and collect 22 copper ore before heading back home feeling exhausted. On day 9, I bought some more parsnip seeds to prepare for the quality bundle in obtaining 5 gold quality parsnips, and I also put down some basic fertilizer which is made from two sap. I then spent the rest of this day fishing. On day 10, I checked the weather report and I saw it was raining on day 11 too, so I rushed into town to upgrade my watering can. A good rule of thumb for upgrading your watering can is to upgrade it on a day when the next day is going to be raining. Since Clint takes two days to upgrade a tool, the day you send it and the next day will class as those two days. Therefore, on the third day, you can collect it. After I did this, I then spent the rest of the day mining. On day 11, I spent the entire day fishing because I was starting to feel a little bit poor. On 
day 12, I collected my watering can from Clint and requested the upgrade for my pickaxe. After I got back to the farm and watered all my plants, can you guess what I did? I fished for the rest of the day in preparation for the egg festival. On day 13, I watered my crops and also the empty spaces so I'd be able to instantly plant my strawberry seeds when I returned from the festival. I introduced myself to everyone at the event, collected some hidden eggs and won a free straw hat. Ha! Take that, Abigail! <laughs> On day 14, I felt a little lost, so I visited Caroline and gave her the final daffodil. Once our friendship level hit two hearts, I made my way into her greenhouse, the door in the kitchen at Pierre's, and received the cutscene I'd been waiting for. I spent the rest of this day cutting trees. On day 15, I received the tea sapling recipe from Caroline, and I donated as many items as I could to the community center. I then headed to the mines and collected a few salmon berries along the way. The salmon berries spawn from day 15 through 18 in spring, and they appear as little red berries on these bushes. They're a perfect way to help recover stamina when mining. I managed to make my way down to floor 38, collecting 57 copper ore before heading home. On day 16, it was another trip back to the mines. After making my way down a few floors, I realized I hadn't bought any food with me, and so I spent the rest of the day collecting more salmon berries and foraging. On day 17, I planted some more spring seeds and began watering my crops. After I completed this strenuous task, I headed to the mines and made my way down to floor 50. I liked to leave the mines around midnight because it gives me enough time to get back home without feeling like I'm rushing. On day 18, it was luckily raining, so I ran to the mines as fast as I could. I managed to make my way down to floor 62 before having to call it a day. The reason I'm not focusing on fishing and worrying about my money right now is that I have the tea sapling recipe and the strawberries planted, so my income will seem passive. I'm also trying my hardest to go deeper in the mines to complete the boiler room in the community center as fast as possible. Having the minecarts unlocked to get around makes a lot of difference. Trust me. On day 19, I did exactly the same as to what I did on day 18. On day 20, I realized I needed to make a bit of money so I could start planting some more seeds to improve my farming level. Without farming level 6, summer would become really tough for me. With this in mind, I made 15 tea saplings to sell to Pierre. Each tea sapling consists of 2 wild seeds, 5 wood, and 5 fiber. The best part is, they also sell for 500 gold each. So, the 15 tea saplings I made gave me 7,500 gold. I then bought some more parsnip seeds and a few decoratives for my home. Once everything was planted, it was another trip back down to the mines. The last item I needed to complete the boiler room was fire quartz, which can only be found below level 80. After I made my way down to level 70, I kept visiting level 20 to pick up some copper and fiber. One trick that you can do to farm fiber is by entering the mine at level 20, head back up the ladder, and then go back to the elevator. Every time you leave the mine, it will reset, so you can keep doing this over and over again. This this rule also applies to mobs. If you're wanting to fast track the burglar ring by killing 500 dust sprites, continually join and leave floor 40. On day 21, my strawberries were ready for harvest and so were a lot of my spring seeds. I knew I wanted to prepare for a chicken coop, so I spent the day clearing out my farm and making some more tea saplings. I unfortunately only had a small amount of fiber, but even so, I managed to make 26 tea saplings. When I slept that night, I reached level 4 farming, level 5 foraging, and made 16,000 gold. On day 22, I requested Robin to build me a coop and I headed back into the mines after purchasing a few snacks from the saloon. Fortunately, I managed to make my way down to floor 85 and I found some fire quartz along the way, meaning I could complete my first bundle. <laughs> On day 23, I bought a few more parsnip seeds in preparation for the next day as Pierre is closed on Wednesdays and headed back into the mine to start gathering as much copper, iron, quartz, and gold as possible. I'm collecting the copper for some more tappers and the other resources to make my quality sprinklers in summer. While in the mines, I did manage to collect myself a good amount of fiber, so of course I used this to make a few more tea saplings, earning myself 11,000 gold. On day 24, I planted all the parsnip seeds I bought and headed to the mine for another day of resource gathering. On day 25, I spent the entire day clearing out the farm to collect some more wood as I knew I was going to request the cow shed as soon as the coop was finished. On day 26, I requested Robin to build me a cow shed and then I headed to check on the traveling merchant. Luckily, she had a few goodies for the community center that I decided to buy. I then went to Marnie's to purchase myself four adorable little chicks, which I named Carla, Camille, Carlos, and Cody. After that, I decided to 
process all of my geodes so I could donate to the museum and receive some rewards. I also sent my copper pickaxe to be upgraded to steel. On day 27, I decided to clear out more of my farm in preparation for summer. I was going to go mining on this day, but I felt like I had been mining so much recently, so instead I decided to go fishing. In hindsight, I probably should have gone mining, but I didn't want to get bored of it. On day 28, the final day of spring, I harvested the remaining parsnips, visited the traveling merchant again and bought a few more items for the specialty fish collection, then headed back to the farm to start planning my space. I realized based on the space I created that the amount of gold I'd need for the quality sprinklers would be more than I had, so I spent the final part of the day mining. As I went to bed, I closed my eyes that night praying to reach level 6 farming, and when I woke... <gasps> I was really disappointed. Not only would I now have to endure the first few days of summer with a basic hoe and a copper watering can, but I know that this problem will consume a significant amount of my day that will prevent me from doing other things like mining and fishing. Instead, I can only remain hopeful that it will rain a few times to propel me in the right direction to have a successful summer. From day one to day 28, you have been with me every step of the way. I hope you'll come back to see where my next adventure will take me. And who knows? I I might even discover something that you don't even know about, but I guess you'll have to tune into the next episode to find that out. And if you are wanting just a crumb, my lord, of the next episode, here you go. So based on the layout, I did write a plan for my farm, but I didn't really expect to spend all my money here. Oopsies. And I remember I needed to feed the chickens, but I need to put the fertilizer down. This is what happens when you buy over 300 seeds. I can't do it. I really, really can't. I'm going to pass out. And as I was literally petting them, I realized they were all brown. Where am I going to get white eggs from, Marnie? Huh? By day 13, my farm was actually really starting to come together, but I realized that I wanted to upgrade my house. I also realized that I had no bloody money, so I don't know what I was going to do because I spent all of it on seeds. So I guess roll on day 14. Woohoo! Day 14 is here and everything has finally grown, although I don't have the mental capacity to harvest everything right now, so I guess you're gonna have to tune into the summer episode to find out what happens next. Thank you so much everybody for watching this episode. I really hope that you enjoy it and you look forward to seeing the summer episode when it comes out. I am really trying my best with the editing and recording of these videos, but I'm still new and I'm still learning, so please give me some time, but also give me feedback. Let me know what you like and what you don't like and I'll try and improve my content. But until then, have a lovely week everybody. Bye-bye.